Hi everybody, it's Ariel Warren, registered dietitian, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and I've had type 1 diabetes for 26 years. Today I want to talk about why pre-bolusing is so annoyingly effective. If you notice, when you bolus right when you eat, your blood sugar spikes and then it drops. Now, if you think, oh, I need more insulin because I went high. Then you give yourself more insulin, your blood sugar rises, but then you go low and you're thinking, what the heck? How do I get rid of that dumb spike? It's timing. Insulin is slow. There are faster acting insulins like the ultra rapid acting insulins, it's the Lumgev, and there's the FIAS. I don't recommend either one of them for tubed pumps. The FIAS is decent with Omnipod, but FIAS actually is a little bit of a stickier substance. FIAS is made by Nova Nordisk, same as Novolox. And because it's a little bit stickier, it tends to cause occlusions in the tubing. And so you might be able to have one day where your blood sugar is pretty decent when you're using FIAS in a tube pump, but after the first day, you'll notice that you're not getting the same response from your insulin. Then there's Lumgev. Lumgev just came out recently. Lumgev is made by Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly makes Humalog. Lumgev, spelled L-Y-U-M-J-E-V, the heck with these names, right? Lumgev is also an ultra rapid acting insulin similar to FIAS, and it's supposedly even a tiny bit faster of an onset compared to FIAS. However, it is not FDA approved for pumps. FIAS wasn't originally, but it is now. But Lumgev is not approved. So of course I knew people were gonna ask me about it. So then I tried it with my different pumps that I use. I do use Omnipod and I use Tandem. I am trainers for both systems. I'm also a trainer for Medtronic. I appreciate what Medtronic has done in the past and the barriers that they've crossed so that we could get the closed loop pups that we have now, but I am, I don't know. Until their Guardian can get up to par with the Dexcom with no calibrations, I don't typically recommend that pump. Just leave it at that. So with Lumgev, I've tried Lumgev and what I experienced was it was okay on the first day, but whenever I use a large bolus, my sight with my pump was so painful. So if you use hardly any insulin, you might be able to get away with Lumgev, but if you use a normal amount of insulin, so really if somebody's using less than about 20 units a day, maybe 30, you might be able to get away with Lumgev in a pump, but really it's just that, oh, after about day two, I started to get weird reactions where my blood sugar wouldn't come down and I found that the insulin just wasn't working, wasn't absorbing as well, and it was causing very tender tissue in that area. So I am not using Lubdev in my pumps ever again. I tried it twice and so hopefully you learned from my lesson. You can try it if you want, but I'm telling you it's not fantastic for pumps. That was a super long tangent, but I love pumps. I love the new technology that's coming out. I love that they have faster acting insulins. I love that they have these, these fancy algorithms to keep your blood sugar in better control. I love that they will have these learning pumps that learn your behavior so that you have to do less and the pump understands you more. Okay, pre-bolusing. That's what we came here to learn about. One of my favorite analogies, which I came up with myself, so sorry if it's a little bit corny, but I love to use analogies because it's easier to learn something when you can picture it. So I like to explain insulin. Fast acting insulin is still slow compared to normal, the normal insulin produced by somebody who has a, a pancreas who's actually working for them. Not like us with diabetes with these little deadbeat pancreases. With type one diabetes, you're insulin dependent, which means that you require insulin when you're eating meals, especially meals that are higher in carbohydrates. Although protein and fat still have an effect on your blood sugar and can cause insulin resistance and can still cause your blood sugar to rise, but that's another topic for another time. So my analogy for why pre-bolusing is so helpful. If you think about it, when if you bolus, you use insulin that has 10 to 15 minutes of onset time, meaning it takes 10 to 15 minutes before it even starts working your body. And depending on the person, it may even take you 20 minutes. And in the morning, when you haven't had a large bolus within 12 plus hours, I call that the insulin drought, and so you require more time of a pre-bolus time. So if it usually is about 10 to 15 minutes during the day, in the morning it might require 20 minutes or even 25 minutes, but slowly increase the amount of time to make sure that you stay safe. If we're using these slower acting insulins and we bolus right when we eat, 
guess what? The blood sugar is going to start rising and the insulin's not working yet. So yes, the blood sugar spikes. Then after about 15 minutes, the insulin starts working and it hits peak efficacy between 60 and 90 minutes. And so then the blood sugar starts coming down, but then your blood sugar is high and that's going to require additional insulin to bring down that high blood sugar. And so it's this annoying mess. And then you have these certain types of foods that cause your blood sugar to go high and stay high, especially refined carbohydrates and high fat foods, you know, the yummy stuff. So what you want to do to minimize that postprandial spike after eating a meal is by giving yourself time to let the insulin work so that you nullify that rise in blood sugar. By bolusing here and giving your body time to use that insulin, then when you eat here, the blood sugar starts to rise, but you have the insulin that's starting to work. So then you just have this moderate rise, or really if you nail it, you have very minimal rise. However, even people with a functioning pancreas still have a bit of a rise in blood sugar, but then they come back to baseline. So it's not a terrible thing to have some little rises, but come back to baseline. But it's these huge roller coaster waves that get very tiring and exhausting. And we have so many things we want to do with our life. We don't want to deal with this all day. It's a very exhausting day. So think of your body as a grass field and your meal which has more carbohydrates, especially a meal high in refined carbohydrates, is like a lit match. And insulin is water. So if you just throw that lit match on a dry grass field without putting any water, it's gonna go up into flames and it's gonna require a lot of water to bring the flames down and to control it and to put the flames out. Second scenario, let's say that you eat and bolus at the same time. So you're throwing the match and you're spraying it down with water at the same time. It's still going to have an explosion of flames, but then it comes down and then the fire is out, but we still have that spike. However, now let's think about it this way. Third situation is where you take the water, insulin, you spray it on the field, and then you take the lit match and throw it on the field you're not gonna have this huge flame effect in a high fire. It's just gonna be that lit match. It's gonna land on the wetted field and there's really not gonna be much of a fire at all. And think of that as insulin. So if you make sure that you get the insulin in your system and you allow it to saturate so that you have good coverage and your body is waiting for the carbohydrates to come, then you're not gonna have this explosion with your blood sugar. So. I know, but bolusing beforehand is terrifying because what if you don't eat that much? What if you eat bolus for that many carbohydrates and you change your mind? So what I do is I bolus for how many carbohydrates I know I'm going to eat. And then the moment I realize I'm going to eat more, that's when I bolus more. So I, if I know I'm always going to eat 30 grams of carbohydrates for my lunch, 15 minutes beforehand, I bolus for 30 grams of carbohydrates. Also note, if my blood sugar is high, and high is relative to what is high for you and your doctor who you're working with, if I feel that my blood sugar is high, then I will give myself additional time to let that insulin work better before I eat my meal. So give myself a pre-bolus, and I give myself additional time if my blood sugar is also high to also help that blood sugar come down. Because if you bolus when you're high, then your blood sugar is just going to rise higher. So it's nice to give yourself a little bit more time to make the blood sugar drop a little bit, and then you eat your carbohydrates, and then minimal spike. So it can be a little bit tricky, but by identifying how your blood sugar reacts to the amount of insulin you take for the amount of carbohydrates, it allows for minimal spikes and better blood sugar. But just remember my little grass field analogy. So by soaking the field down, giving yourself a bolus of insulin before you eat, you're allowing your body to use the insulin before you light the match, AKA eat your meal, so that you have minimal rise in blood sugar, minimal flames to your, to your dry field analogy here. Hopefully that makes sense for you. If you need help with your diabetes, you wanna understand your diabetes, if you wanna learn about the different pumps or understand about which pump works best for you, 
or if you just want to go over your pump data. I love going through the CGM and pump reports and teaching people how to identify their own trends. Then you can reach out to me and we can work together one on one with consulting and I do work through telehealth so we can stay connected wherever you are. So hopefully you're doing well and I will talk to you next time. Okay, bye bye.